My, 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 my. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into just a normal dude doing a tech review on things that he uses IRL. This is just gonna be a normal ass video. You can do the searches on YouTube for the specs, for the different things that's different from the X2 and X3, GoPro Hero 94, whatever you wanna do, but that's not what this is gonna be. There's plenty of tech channels. There's plenty of dudes that own one wheels that can show you all of that kind of thing. That's not what this is. This is just an unboxing and showing you real world usage from a dude who's just gonna be walking, gonna be going on vacation, going on a cruise, like these kind of things. And it's just to show you, can this fit in 99% of people's lives who don't own one wheels, who don't live in New York City, who don't live in Venice Beach? Let's find out. Now I got a whole bunch of goodies. Look at this, check it out. Ordered from B&H as always, not as always. I do Amazon, I do Best Buy, all of that. I try to support big corporations because that's what we're all about in the United States. But we got a whole box full of Insta360 stuff. Insta360, X3. I was thinking about getting the RS, the one, the one inch sensor, but it might have better specs on the camera, might have better low light capability than this one, but it's also an action cam. I'm not trying to ask it to do anything it's not designed to do. I have a main vlogging camera. I have a ZV-1 from Sony. That's not, this isn't the replacement for that. This is the addition to, to get different shots that I can't get with a ZV-1. The selfie stick. I got the one with the built-in tripod. I believe this is probably like last year's model or something. And then we also got the extended selfie stick this one goes like nine feet or some dumb shit like that 14 inches the 9.8 feet jesus christ i don't know how useful or how often i'm going to be using this compared to this one this one seems like a little overboard but i've seen people who can recreate drone shots who can do different things creatively that this one can't so we got both just to see what the vibe's going to be i'm going to use this underwater i'm potentially going to go water slides rivers lakes that kind of thing with this that's kind of what it's for is for those type of events but the way 360 cameras work with the refraction and physics of light and water it doesn't do a great job on its own so you need the dive case this was actually much more expensive than i expected it to be and i don't know if i'll get as much use out of it as i wish i would for the price i believe this is like 70 bucks or 80 bucks the thing that goes hand in hand with the dive case though most definitely the floating hand grip the thing does not float on its own it is designed to go underwater but it will sink to the ground so you got to have this if you're planning on being underwater or being anywhere near water and then lastly, lens cap. I had to get this. It does come with its own like neoprene case that you can actually open up and charge through so you can case it and put it in. But I bought this on the side because of a very specific reason. And it's because I plan on using external audio. But in order for these to work and stay invisible, you gotta have these two things as well, a mic adapter. And then we have the thing that keeps the receiver of the wireless go to invisible and this is kind of just like a it's kind of just like a small rig type thing anyway i'll show you right now let's start unboxing some of this stuff Shoot. this is how it comes right here it doesn't come with a power block just like everything else these days but it does have the cables it looks like this is the neoprene cover and then it comes with a couple of user manuals everything you would expect and then this is the actual insta 360 itself has a little bit of weight to it fairly hefty i like that everybody raves about the screen now right out the gate this is exactly what i was talking about you see how the lens bulges out see how it rests like that and it rests directly on the lens not a good thing now the reason i bought the lens cap again is so that way the wireless go can stay attached to it because look if you if i put the whole thing in the sleeve it needs the wireless go needs to attach right here so this lens cap and fits over the top like that so i can still access all the ports but keep it safe and there's actually space within the lens cap that i can feel like it's not actually touching the lens so it gives it a little bit of cushion where there's air in there that's good so in case it goes like that you know so this little baby thing right here is the microphone adapter for the wireless go and it looks like you just open up this side right here you see how it has this flap that's covering the usb i was like how do you put this on like that flap gets in the way y'all see that like either way that I rotate this, it's USB-C, so it technically fits both ways. I was like, how do I put this on? But they actually made this to where the flap just pops off. It's just like held on there by plastic little grabbers, and then there's a metal bar. So you just pop the flap off, pop this one on with those same with those same grabbers. So that's what it looks like with the mic adapter on the side. This stays completely invisible, so this gets cut out of the uh, gets cut out of the scene just like the selfie stick does. And then this is the exact reason why I bought the neoprene case. Ooh just like that so i could still have the mic adapter on there main issue not really an issue though this seems like it would be really easy to use and this is what makes it watertight if you take this off and you've lost this piece then the whole thing is not waterproof now your shit's gonna get messed up easily so that might be like a design flaw but it's just something you have to remember where this is at if you're bad at losing stuff 
Better remember where this is at. Now, there were two versions of the selfie stick. Like, not, not the big version, but two versions of the small version of the selfie stick. Built-in tripod. Screw this bad boy on. Excuse me, ma'am. I don't know why you're here. Boom. I'm not going to open this one. It's just a waterproof case. I'm not going to open this one either because I'll open it whenever I need it. I'm going on a cruise and that's where the footage is going to be for this review. But obviously, I'm going to need this for excursions. And then I'll open the extended one as well. It's the same thing as this one. It's just much thicker and it goes out to nine feet. So I'm going to see how creative we can get with this one. I will use this in the real world. That will be what the rest of the video is about. And I'll see y'all guys back here with the final conclusion, if it's worth it or not, if all of this money that I've spent on this is something that is feasible for your average person for a vlog setup and a day in the life type thing. See y'all in 12 days. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we back from vacation, five day cruise on Carnival Breeze. I actually made a vlog where I integrated the 360 footage within my normal vlogging setup of the ZV-1. So if y'all guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link somewhere. It's like a five minute, it's like a seven minute vlog. I promise y'all guys enjoy it. I think I make pretty good vlogs and the 360 footage that I use definitely enhanced that by giving you a different look and a different perspective and just a unique feel to the 360 shots that the it's just not capable with the ZV-1. First and foremost, is it worth it or is it not? I personally, for what I intend to use this for and how I intend to use it and incorporate it amongst my gear, this is an amazing camera and completely worth it. The video quality on this camera, the 5.7K is amazing. Uh, it allows you to punch in, pull out, go to tiny world, go to like, go to like a give a, give a parallax zoom effect to give you this different feel to the video makes it definitely provides a certain amount of action that you are not capable with with a single camera infinite literally infinite ways of of creating editing the footage to make the shots extremely unique i had the one shot from the boat with middle of the ocean by j by by drake playing on the vlog I, I was literally just holding the camera out like this on the deck and it ended up in post being this very very unique kind of a surreal feeling whenever I edit it into the vlog. And it's all at your disposal because the 360 camera. So while it is amazing and how I had a great time and just the just the excitement of editing the video for the first time and all of those kinds of things, there are cons and drawbacks just like any other camera. First and foremost, the biggest pro about this camera is also the biggest con about this camera. You have unlimited editing potential when it comes to reframing your shot from the 360 footage but because you have unlimited potential, it slows down your workflow so much. You have to sit there, scrub through the footage, think in your head about what you want to do to this footage to give it the unique perspective. And then you have to go in there and manually keyframe everything. The same shot that was off of the boat, given that surreal feeling that I was talking about, that took me a while to edit because I had to look at all the footage, look at all the possible angles, go to Tiny Planet, go out of it, rotate, look at exactly how I wanted this, this shot to look. And then I had to go in there and keyframe everything. It's an amazing shot, looks good, does, serves its purpose, took forever. Now you don't have to sit there and manually keyframe everything, especially if you want to be the subject of the video. You can just do quote unquote me mode. While it takes away a lot of the editing and a lot of the manually keyframing, you no longer have the ability to keyframe and see the 360 video. It's all baked in. So it's kind of like a gift and a curse. Saves you a lot of time on editing if you just want it to be you. But also once you do that, you have no other option. And the point of the 360 camera, in my opinion, is to have all options available. So I will probably never use me mode and I'll probably never use the camera tracking in the software just because it's not what I intend for this. If I want to just shoot me, I'll use my ZV-1. I'll use my A7 IV. Like if, if that's the goal, if the goal is to shoot me, I'll do that. Next up, 5.7K sounds well and good and everything, mad detail, mad large file. And normally that's okay because then that allows me to do whatever I want. But the 5.7K from an action cam is not the same thing as 8K or 4K from a standard single single lens camera. The 5.7K, once it's stitched together and once you start doing zoom in and then zoom outs, it ends up being roughly 1080p. So don't go in expecting like 5.7K crystal clear footage. I can zoom in and I can do, I can zoom in so far and everything stays perfect. Eventually you will start to pixelate. So it does require a large and medium to fast paced micro SD. And I would say I wouldn't put anything in this less than 128 gigabytes. And because it's such a large file and because it's such large data for the fact that you can look around everywhere, it is extremely taxing on your computer. And if it's not taxing, on your computer, it is 100% taxing on Premiere Pro. My Premiere Pro crashed mad times. Basically, after every time I loaded in a video and started editing, I had to save every single every single key point that I did. I saved right after 
just in case it crashed. And I'm not editing on a, on no cheap computer. I got a 3090. My computer, just for the CPU alone, just for the computer unit alone, minus the monitors, was like $4,000, $4,500. It is a powerhouse of a PC. It's a gaming PC. For those who play video games, if you play COD and you play multiplayer, I get roughly 210 frames. 210 frames a second on a game as big as Call of Duty and Warzone. That tells you the power of the PC, and I was still crashing. It might just be Premiere Pro is a shit program, but still, it's it's annoying. And this might not be a con, but it's a con to me just because I feel like it's something that's missing, but I understand why it's missing because it's free software. This con that I have is not what the software is intended to do, but you cannot edit a timeline into the software, or at least not the way I found. You can you can trim, you can make the clip smaller and just get the part that you want. You can keyframe in the software, but you can't put two clips next to each other and export that. You have to export each clip individually. Now you can export in 360 still, so you so you can trim down and then export and then edit in Premiere Pro if you want to. But let's just say like if I want to do a time lapse, but I want the time lapse to end within the music spacing, I can't make that time lapse happen in the app and then have it exact to music. Like I have to do the time lapse and then I have to go and cut to music in Premiere Pro. You don't have to use the Insta360 software if you have Premiere Pro or Final Cut. There is a plugin available for you to just be able to upload the footage direct to Premiere and bypass the Insta360 software and do everything pretty much that you can do in the software in Premiere. The only thing about that is that, again, it's all manually keyframing in Premiere. It's like driving an automatic vehicle versus a manual vehicle, but it takes the fun away from editing in the Insta360 software. The Insta360 software is very intuitive. Even the software on the phone is fairly intuitive to edit from, but because I want full control and because I edit in Premiere Pro and I want the timeline, I have to sacrifice the fun that is editing in the Insta360 software for the flexibility and for the ability to edit the video fully in Premiere Pro. And then lastly, accessories that I bought. As y'all saw at the beginning, I bought a plethora of accessories. Literally didn't use any of them except for this selfie stick. Now I'm not gonna return anything because in the future I will steadily use those other items, but for your everyday person, I would say that buying everything that I purchased is overload. The audio quality on this is pretty solid as long as it's not windy. If it's windy, you're going to hear the wind and there's no way to muffle it because of the 360 camera setup. But if it's not windy, the audio by itself is amazing, actually. The extended selfie stick, I didn't use at all. This length of stick would probably be 95% of all you will ever need from an Insta360 camera. The extended selfie stick, really the only thing that I could see using for is, is, is establishing shots like B-roll, maybe faking a drone shot or trying to get a lot of dynamic movement in a, in a shot because it's so much further. But I didn't even open, I didn't even, I didn't even screw this onto that at all during this whole five day trip. Didn't use the dive case, didn't use the floating handle. I will use that in the future, but the excursions and what I did didn't require it. I definitely went overboard on purchasing accessories when this is really all that you need as your everyday person. I didn't even need the lens cap that I purchased because I never rested it like this. I Because this has the selfie stick built in, I just did that and put it and put it down when I needed to eat, when I needed to do something. That's all that I did. I never set it on its side. Just stood up like that. So overall, what I would say is for me and for you, I mean, if you're someone who thinks that you're going to get use out of it and is it worth the purchase, I would say absolutely. But I will say this. And this is probably something that people are going to be like, ah, I can just use a 360 and fix it in post later. While you can fix it in post later, it does not take away from the creativity that is required to, to get the shots and make them engaging from in camera as you're recording. This footage can be just as boring as badly shot footage from a camera like the one that I'm filming in now or your normal video camera, your phone, it can be just as boring. Just because you have the capability of editing and editing to however you want, it doesn't reduce at all the importance of being creative when gathering your shots and when shooting for post-production. Whether it be on this camera, whether it be on this camera, whether it be on this camera, the shot is a shot, and if that shot is boring, there is literally zero that you can do in post-production to make it more engaging. Not even Tiny Planet will help you. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that is this video. I hope I helped y'all guys in some form or fashion. My ZV-1 setup versus this being roughly the same price, the ZV-1 being like $150 more expensive. I would probably still purchase the ZV-1 just because you do get some background blur and, and I know how to use the camera. It's just what I'm familiar with. But if you're wanting something that has a more creative look to it, if you want something that has 
more versatility than the ZV-1. If you just want a one camera setup, this is pretty, this is pretty solid. I can't even lie to you. But other than that, guys, I hope you all appreciate this review. If you do like, comment, leave me, you know, be like, hey, you need to do more tech reviews. Just let me know and I'll be glad to do them. Um, but other than that, guys, appreciate y'all's time and I will catch everybody in the next video.